Yo! Need a hand with these guys? Huh? Good job holding them back on your own. Dude! You're not the only hero here. Uh, uh, I mean, where did you even come from? I was watching from inside, man. Okay. You shouldn't get involved. Relax, fella. Allow me to show you how it's hey, done. Hey, hold on! Listen up. I'm just gonna warn you. I'm a better fighter than this guy. Huh? <sighs> Fuck. Yeah, you're welcome. Right. Thanks for making them slink into the night before I could even ask who they were. Huh? Later. That would be the white mask of the Yokohama Liomon. These guys would break your knees for the right price. So they're just a bunch of thugs for hire? Pretty much. Well, anything else I can do for you? I've earned something of a reputation here in this town. But you've got a face I haven't seen anywhere before. Why are these goons picking a fight with you? Got any ideas? Mm, I've got a hunch. But I'm gonna keep it to myself. A tightwad, huh? Didn't I just bail your ass out? A handyman? It's Kuana. You got trouble here, I'm the one you call. I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. I can handle shit the cops won't deal with either. Not exactly a service I'm in need of at the moment. Crossing that line is tough, and I prefer to do it myself. Oh, really? And what line of work would that be? I'm a private detective in Comro, Joe. What is it now? Some competition just showed up on my turf and made a scene, man. How would you feel if the situation was reversed? You wouldn't tolerate any disrespect, would you? So state your name, and then you say, Sorry, Kuwana, I made a bit of a ruckus here. Exactly how high up the food chain is a handyman in this town? I'm just trying to teach you some manners. People let you teach manners around here? You can't even exchange cards right. I see you know how to block a kick. So let's move on to the next part. Don't let me down now. <laughs> ah! Now that's fancy. What the hell's this? Hey, what else you got? <sighs> Better than I was expecting. Uh, right back at you. Give yourself a pat on the back. Hey, you want to tone it down, or you want another lesson? I'm listening. <sighs> you don't know when to give up. Time's up, both of you. The cops are almost here. What the... Sugira-kun? You know each other? After we get out of here. Come on, let's use the back way. Seriously? How do a couple of grown-ass men end up bickering like that? I was just finishing what he started. Yeah. And you can thank Sugihira-kun here that you're still standing. How do you even know this guy? Uh... Kuwana-san's our senpai here in Ijincho. He's the local handyman. He's got tons of connections both above and below ground. So... Definitely a higher tier of service than us. Have you been working together? No, but we did pay our respects before we opened our office. Bowed our heads, asked for his blessing, all that. Unlike someone, Sugira-kun knows his manners. Settle down. So talk. 
Who were those idiots back there? Kiwana-san says they're a gang. The Yokohama Liumang. Specifically, Liumang assassins called the White Masks. They were surprisingly inept back there, though. Nah, they just didn't know who they crossed. Hold up. Assassins? Why would someone put a hit out on Yagmi-san? Maybe they were just out to scare you. I mean, I doubt even the Liumang would take someone out in public. They don't like crowds. Whatever the case, can you find out who hired them? I prefer to know who wants me dead. No can do. Even they don't know their clients. They get all their gigs piped in from the dark web. Good news is, you can hire them yourself, too. Want me to hit them up for you? No thanks. I'm good on the contract killing front. Man, oh man. What kind of shit did you step in? If you're gonna make a mess in this town, I want in. Some things are better left to the locals. Especially when it starts turning gray. Fine by me. What is? Having someone around who knows the ins and outs of Ijinsho, man. Besides, don't you owe him for saving your ass from the white masks? He didn't save my ass. Pull the stick out, buddy. I can tell he's cool. Yo, wanna grab a drink? On me. <laughs> now here's a kindred spirit. You're on, and I'm getting round two. <laughs> See? I knew you were half bad. Wait, show me now, do you? You coming with, Tuck? Nah, not tonight. I'm heading back to the agency. Got a few things to sort out. Your loss, as they say, always take what comes, never chase what leaves. <laughs> My thoughts exactly. Except maybe a little more fancy. <laughs> it's like we're already old friends. What is going on? Having a party? Hey, welcome back. Care for a drink, Yagami-san? Heads up. Now make yourself at home. Not that you haven't already. Who, me? Well, whatever do you mean? Kuana's fine. He just swung by to have a chat with you, man. Not that I mind hanging out over beers and shogi. Kaito's a gentleman and a scholar. I like your style. What do you want with me? Check it out, Yagami-san. You're only here to get to the bottom of that Hiro Mikushiba kid's murder, right? That's gotta be the reason the Yokohama Liumang attacked you, isn't it? All I'm saying is that you've gotta cut me in, man. Thanks, but I've got enough help. So some hotshot detective strolls into town and tries to leave the local guy out in the cold? <laughs> no offense, but that's not gonna fly. You gonna play your turn? Just finish your game and go home already. When you benefit from someone who knows the scene? You know, I can get you anywhere in a jean show above or below ground. Aren't you expensive? I'll give you a first-time customer price. I'm not about to sit here and let some outsider swoop in and take all the credit alone. And that means I guess I'm gonna chill here until you give me the nod. It's Tsukumo and Sukiura's place as far as I'm concerned. Not even my call to make. I welcome having more company. The more the merrier. That'll be the agency motto. I don't really care. Such a nice office. I'm gonna love it here. <laughs> Son of a bitch student teacher should burn in hell for bullying a kid all the way to suicide. Mikoshiba was a damn psychopath. Fellas, I told you I wanted to be kept in the loop on this stuff. You saying Mikoshiba had more than one killer? And where are they now? You think these lunatics are still hanging around Ijincho? It's been over two months already, man. If they were here, they're probably long gone by now. Another peaceful day in Ijincho, right? Check outside! It's the Liumang! The White Mask again! Let's go, Chuck! Catch you later. <laughs> Not bad. Look out below! <laughs> Running a little late tonight, aren't we, Kaito-san? 
Yeah, my bad. Had to punch my way through a few guys. Hey, you gotta run for it. If you stick around, it's not gonna matter how many lives you've got. Yeah, but if I run now, who's gonna pay for Tsukumo's window then? Huh? Uh. For fuck's sake, I'll just pay for it. Now get out of there. Tuck! Path's all clear. I'm on my way! Are we done here? Yagami! Yeah? You want something? Uh, what was it? Tesso? Just want to say, I'm impressed. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to take out all these guys, to be honest. Uh, thanks. But if you're feeling generous, how about you tell me who hired you? <laughs> Didn't I say this before? I got no interest in doing that. Can you do me a favor and turn down the job next time, maybe? Yeah, right. If the request comes through again, I'm taking it. Simplest solution for you is to get the hell out of town. Me and my big mouth. Just go already. Hey, not bad, man. A lot of young folks look up to Tesso, so gaining his respect is gonna have some perks. All I want to know is if the Viewmom are no longer a threat. <laughs> Wouldn't go that far. Tesso's not the only young hothead among them. But hey, at least they probably won't blindside you anymore, and that's a victory in itself. Guess that is a step forward, a baby one. Anyway, we should go check up on 99. Something tells me they're not in the clear just yet. Hmm? Huh? Sugiura! <laughs> Yagamishi! Oh, thank God you're back. Tsukumo, what happened? He's knocked out cold. Damn it. Masked men attacked us. I couldn't fight them. Masked men, you say? Were they any different from what the Liumang wear? Uh, I, I couldn't get a good look. Sukiyoshi, they stuck up on him with a bat and came after me next. They caught me. My pinky. They broke it? Hey, are you okay? I'll call an ambulance. If they want me, then come after me. Tuck, I think the Leomong were part of the plan, as bait. They probably only came to lure us away from the office. This camera ought to show everyone coming in and out of the building. Look, there's me and Kaito chasing down the Leomong. But here's the hitch. There were seven of them, and they didn't have those trademark white masks. So clearly, they're not Liumang. <laughs> they must have got the white masks to lure us out, meaning they're the ones calling the shots here. Wouldn't surprise me if they were also Ihara's accomplices to murder. That'd be something. Though, it's hard to believe a single murder could involve so many people. Really? Why do you say that? More friends, more loose lips. One slip of the tongue can bring down an entire group. Taking a man's life would require absolute solidarity from every single member. What could be their connection? Could be their Ahara's buddies in blue. After hearing what happened to his kid, they couldn't help but feel for the guy. If it were me, yeah, I'd sympathize. But not enough to watch a man die. Or do the deed myself. Yeah, who threw their life away for that? Unless we're talking about the mob over here. That e -cig's that good, huh? Considering the area's volatility, the Liumang are the best bet in the house. But if it's not them... Well, there is the Seiryu clan. 
but they have some decorum compared to these guys. And then the Komi Jewel, the Koreans, they would never get caught on camera. They're shy like that. Go figure. <laughs> Impressive list you've got up there, Mr. Handyman. Too bad they're all dead ends. Hey, if there's a crime in Kamurocho, would you know who did it off the top of your head? No. Uh, uh. This footage is the lead we've been waiting for. Now we're gonna hunt them down, with Tsukumo and Sugiura. You get hit in the head or something? Find them and they'll mess your ass up. Will they? Don't you get it? They were planning to take you out, man. The Liumang letting you off is nothing short of a miracle. Or would you rather risk your neck over nothing? Where we come from, risking our necks the bare minimum. <laughs> Yui Jinsho guys must not see much action. Yeah, well, any gene show a handyman's wages don't cover life and limb. I don't recall ever hiring you. Yeah, and if you asked me now, I'd say hell no. This shit's getting way too over my head. And yours. Sorry, Kaito-san. But I'm gonna have to pass on drinks for a while. Send my regards to the lads. Well, hey. Kawana? What the hell are you doing here? Yagami makes his way to Sawa Sensei's apartment, hoping to get some answers that will shed some light on the incident. But, as if by coincidence, he encounters Kuana instead. What ties could an earnest school teacher and an underground handyman share? you doing here you forget to mention you had a connection to Sawa sensei or what awkward do you or not and don't pretend you're just here to fix a toilet huh. yo <laughs> now it's RK on top of you Yagami We've got more incoming. What is this? These idiots aren't after you. It's me they really want. And I just walked into their trap. What could they possibly want with you? To come all the way from Kamurocho? Akutsu. What is this about? Why do you want her? Looks like they don't feel like talking about it. Get these two fuckers first. Hey, let's go, Yagami! You go ahead. You're the one they're after, aren't you? I owe you one. Take Yagami out! Just leave us. There's backup downstairs! We'll be right behind you! Kuana! Hey, been waiting for you. You a slow runner or something? Uh, they got here before I did. Yagami, sticking your nose in our business again. How about I stick you in an oil barrel and see if you float? That's a halfway decent threat this close to the sea. Ooh, the great detective sounds intimidated. If we make it out of this, I've got some questions that need answering. Sawa sensei won't talk. I wouldn't worry about the future. <laughs> Your life is coming to an end soon. Yagami! <laughs> Stay down, would you? <laughs> Not happening. Good luck, Yagami-kun. 
Soma's real prey is Kiwana, who narrowly escapes his trap. Kiwana is pursued by R.K., the crime ring running Kamurocho. I just found a picture. This is Kitakata-sensei from 13 years ago. It's Kawana. That's him, all right. Yeah. Not only that, Sawa-sensei was part of this class, which makes Kawana her homeroom teacher, too. This is the link we've been looking for. Everything has clicked into place. Kawana-san was the linchpin of this case. So, 13 years ago, Yu Kitakata left teaching behind after Mitsuru-kun's incident and became Kawana the handyman. That's what made him turn to his uncle at Siren for help. He told me Kawana tried really hard to make it in the underground, had some good reason for it. Possible. He was abducted five years ago by individuals thought to be his acquaintances. Huh. You think one of them was Kuwana-san? I wouldn't rule it out. RK might have learned of Kuwana's involvement while searching for Kauai. Maybe they came to a gene show so they could get details on the incident from him? Yes, that would explain RK's arrival in town as well. W Hold up. We already know this. Oh. The students in the video? Individuals acquainted with Kauai. They certainly fit the bill. But why would they wind up abducting him? Huh. Maybe Kawana asked for their help? No. He forced them to. What makes you say that? I agree. Yagamishi's provided a working theory that ties together the Kamurocho and Ijincho incidents. So if we can get Yui Mamiya to corroborate this... Ahara's alibi, Kawai's disappearance. Kawana's most likely tied to everything. We'll get all the answers we need if we can find him. Turns out he recorded what we did in the city. You can see all our faces so clearly. How we covered Kawai's mouth as he screamed for help. I... Even if you know all the backstory, the video is a clear-cut abduction. Hello? Yo, know who this is, Yagami? Kawana? Yeah. <laughs> I heard you're looking for me. Where are you? I'm willing to meet you now if you come alone. But you have to let Mamiya go in exchange. What? All right. She's free as soon as I see you. Works for me. Then come on down to your office. I thought I'd let myself in. What? <laughs> Gotta say, this chair's pretty comfy. Pretty sure I locked up behind me when I left. Listen, I'll only meet you alone. No one else. And don't make me wait long, or I could change my mind. Hope you don't mind, I let myself in. Now are you gonna hold up your end and release you, Imamiya? Come on. You and I can either try to make this work, or neither of us is gonna get what we want. So, you gonna make the call or what? Hello? Yagami-san? I'm with Kawana. You can let Mamiya-san go. Got it. Will do. Sorry about all this, Yagami. Why don't you sit down? Maybe it's time you and I had a heart-to-heart. -heart. How's Kaito holding up? <sighs> Kaito-san's recovering in the hospital. For now. Sawa-sensei is another story, though. I can hardly believe it. She was the last person I wanted to get mixed up in all this shit. If that's the case, why were you already waiting in her apartment? RK's top men were lying in wait over there to get their hands on you. So why was she the one lying on the ground? Answer me, Kawana. Was it because of you? Would you feel better if it was? How dare you? You're thinking that if you hadn't stuck your nose in her affairs, she might be at home grading her papers right now. 
You tell me. Is that what's eating away at you right now? Because if it is, you're mistaken. That guilt is mine alone to bear. It's my burden to carry. When I saw in the news that she had been murdered in cold blood, it felt like the whole world had stopped spinning to me. I would take it all back right now if I could. But unfortunately, to fix this I'd need to turn the clock back further than you'd think. You mean back to when you were a school teacher? Yeah, basically. Back to when I still had a little faith in humanity. Seeing someone's life get cut short, you never really bounce back from it, do you? But I don't have to tell you that. I did my homework on you, Yagami. It seems you were a fairly accomplished lawyer. You even scored a murder acquittal. But we both know how that ended. The death of an innocent young woman. You and I are the same. We both have scars. And they're the type of scars that never fully heal. Yeah. Maybe you're right. But for Sawakun, it was 13 years ago. The very day before Mitsuru Kusumoto jumped, she stopped me in the hall so she could tell me about how serious the bullying really was. Up until that day, I just assumed it was boys being boys, teasing. I figured it was harmless, that they'd get bored with it, and then they'd move on. I mean, come on. Kawaii had to have been twice the size of Mitsuru. It's not like I'd seen any fighting, so I warned him not to overdo it, and eventually he would take the hint. Well, according to what I was told, you smirked, actually. Yeah, I guess that's what I did. That was too late. Sawakun had to point it out. Sensei, how could you be so blind, she asked. Her eyes were this piercing mix of pity and scorn. According to what she told me, nearly half the class was bullying Mitsuru. She said she'd seen him at the station. She made it sound like he had half a mind to jump onto the tracks right then and there. I'm not so presumptuous anymore, but back then I used to think my students were my biggest fans. I thought I'd won their hearts and minds, but the look on Sawakun's face that day made me see the truth. I couldn't just go on smiling like nothing happened, so I decided to do my homework. The next day I put a hidden camera in the classroom after school. So you admit that you're the one who recorded that video? Yeah. You saw it, right? Talk about the ugly side of kids. Hard to watch, wasn't it? Unfortunately, by the time I picked up the camera and saw what it recorded, Mitsuru had made his jump. I missed him by a few crucial moments. What happened in that classroom was the final straw. Later on, all the bullies were asked what happened. Each and every one of them lied. Kawai started it. It wasn't our idea, they said. To anyone outside of it, all they'd seen was Kawai forcing Mitsuru to do his bidding. So the people held culpable were Kawai and myself, the callous homeroom teacher who deliberately turned a blind eye. That was the day I began living my life with real purpose. So you couldn't forgive your students who got away with bullying. You went so far, you put aside your own life to make sure they atoned somehow. That's right. Mitsuru Kusumoto's still a vegetable. He's as good as dead. But I don't care. We have no right to forget about him. You say that, even though Sawa-sensei ended up paying for it. 
I'll ask you again. Why were you at her apartment the other day? Don't dodge the question this time. I wouldn't say I dodged it. But I suppose I should explain from the beginning. Four years ago, there was a suicide at Sawakun's school. It was her own student this time. You know this, right? A student at Seiryo High School? Toshiro Ehara. Yeah. When she was in court, Sawakun had no choice but to say there wasn't any bullying. Soon as she told me that, I knew Hiro Mikoshiba would be my next target. Of course, she had no idea about any of that. When Sawakun learned Mikoshiba had been murdered, though, she reached out to me herself. What did she want? She had a sneaking suspicion that I was involved in his death. She called me a few times, prodding carefully for answers. <laughs> Quite the perceptive lady, really. And? What kind of answers did you give her? I denied any knowledge of it, but at one point, she mentioned something kind of odd. That there was a detective at the school already investigating the incident. Huh? She meant you, of course. A detective already knee-deep into the case, despite the police barely even knowing about Mikoshiba. The police are a pain in the ass. But when an out-of-town detective comes sniffing around, that's bad. I knew I had to act fast to get you off the trail. Although, Sawakun was a problem too. I thought I'd kill two birds with one stone. And then what? First, I found out where the two of you would be meeting up, at that little cafe. Then, I hired the Leo Monk to step in. <laughs> but you put up one hell of a fight. They had strength in numbers, but you would have taken out the whole group if I hadn't stepped in. Nonetheless, my other message went through. At the same time, Sawakun was handed a photo of Mikoshiba's final moments. I left that task to someone you know. Yui Mamiya. They hadn't seen each other in 13 years. Sawakun had no idea. The lady in the sunglasses. Yui Mamiya was involved in that too? Everything I did that night was intended as a warning to Sawakun. Although, I guess I didn't have to be so extreme about it. Yeah. Sawa-sensei was too smart. She must have started suspecting that you'd had something to do with Mikoshiba's murder. After all, who else could have known we'd be meeting at that cafe? She'd have traced it right back to you. Even if Sawakun had started to suspect me, I knew she wouldn't sell me out to the cops. We're two alike. The both of us lost students to suicide on our watch. That said, I couldn't bear the thought of dragging her down into the mess I started, so I scared her off, and I thought she would stay away. <laughs> The day she was killed, she called to ask if we could speak in person. I could tell something was wrong. She was on the verge of tears the whole call. Then she broke down. I asked her why, of course. But she wouldn't give me a straight answer, no matter how I tried to phrase the question. So then what? Did you just waltz on over there? It doesn't seem like you. Watch it. You don't know me well enough to say that. Maybe. But I assume you had some sort of plan going in. Were you gonna confess to her? Here's the thing. If she'd figured out that I was behind Mikoshiba, and it didn't sit well with her, I would have told her every last detail. Sawakun, no. I think she would have understood me. Or at least that's what I had believed. In hindsight, I think she was forced to make that call. Under normal circumstances, I'm sure she'd have rather washed her hands of me. Hard as it is to hear, I think she called me under duress. RK probably had her hostage. That would explain the vague responses. That's probably why her voice was trembling. It's tragic. You mean it was RK? Why do they want you so badly anyway? I don't know. What? If I knew their angle, I'd be doing more than just scurrying around. You serious? 
believe me, I'm just as clueless as you are, much as I hate to admit it. Honest. I'm not thrilled that a small army wants my head on a platter. Have you noticed how RK seems to show up at the worst possible times? Someone must be pulling their strings. Then we're on the same page. At least we agree on something. <laughs> Just a sec. Yeah. I'm still over here with Yagami-san. You're not being tailed by any of his guys, are you? Okay. Then I'll meet you right now. That was Mamiya-kun. She said she's free. You guys have been true to your word. Tell Sugiura-kun that I said thank you. Now you want to go? We still have some business to settle here. Now remember, I'm the handyman here. Let me do the dirty work. I don't know what else to tell you. But you need to get out. While you still can. If you disappear into the night, I don't want to go busting my ass just to find you again. Before you leave, I'll need some contact info. A phone number would be nice. Oh, no need for that. As far as I'm concerned, this is goodbye. Kawana! You guys again. You really need the masks? Come on, Kurokawa kids. You heard that, right? The detective here already knows everything. Kawana! What are you going to do now? What do you think happens when he spills everything? Sounds like your lives are over, unless you shut him up. But Sensei, you'll finish the job for us, right? Huh? Is that you, Akaike? Oh, he's even got a name to your voice. But... Answer me, Sensei! I know, I know. I'll be the one to finish it. You just knock him out. Sealing his fate alongside Kuwana's. Ridden by guilt, Kuwana sets off on a path of vengeance. And the bullies he drags with him are shackled to the shadows. However, Yokosawa's murder serves as a deadly wake-up call to what he's done. So this Ahara was actually Kawana. Huh. <laughs> Sensei and Ahara-san have a pretty similar build. Not sure they could have pulled it off otherwise, you know? But some spots don't look right, like his mouth. You sure that's really Kawana-san? That part around his mouth is fake. He said he scanned a Harasan's face and made it on a 3D printer. Oh, huh. I see. His eyes are hidden behind the sunglasses, and the seams on his jaw are obscured by the mask. That's incredible, I must say. With the mouth area so visible, it's too convincing to think he's anybody else. After that, Mamiya and Kuwana acted out the groping as they arrived at Shinjuku Station. Kuana jumped out of the train and Mamiya chased after him. And then, in the smallest of blind spots in a station absolutely packed with cameras, you were waiting for Kuana, who looked just like you. With the two of you matching, you were able to swap places in that huge crowd without anyone noticing. Kuana handed you the transit card used to pass the ticket gate. Just one piece of hard evidence that places you and Ikebukuro. 7.43 a.m. And right after the swap, Mamiya started calling for help. The person they're after is... Wanted for the murder of private school teacher Yoko Sawa in her own apartment, Kanagawa PD is conducting a search for the suspect, self-proclaimed handyman Yu Kitakata. Nearby Why are they looking for Kuwana? Shouldn't they be after Soma? Sawa-san's former teacher before and after the incident. It's also surfaced that he's been using a false identity for over a decade. The police are hopeful that their search will turn up some sort of connection to Sawasan.
Hmm. If Kawanasan was caught on camera, then surely some RK thugs were as well? Yeah, I think so. On that note, I should have been in the footage too. The police only seem to want Kawana, but why? Guess we'll have to ask them ourselves. Ask who? Detective Watanabe from Kanagawa PD. He was the guy in charge of Mikoshiba's murder. Been a while, hotshot. Yeah, I guess it has. Hey, I'm curious. Do you have any evidence that Kawana killed Sawa-sensei? I take it you saw the news. Kawana was caught on camera near the crime scene, plus he knew the victim. And if that's not enough, he was using a fake name. How's that for evidence? But I saw Soma holding an ice pickup to Sawa-sensei. Plus, there were RK footprints all over the scene. So why is Kawana the only suspect? Because the big boys with big balls at HQ said so. Barking at me won't get you anywhere. So this is all just pressure from upstairs? What is going on here? Why are you so bent out of shape? Kawana's a legitimate suspect, and all we're doing is following procedure. So stick your private investigator schnoz somewhere else. You know, you sound pretty bent out of shape yourself. Where are you right now? Uh-huh. I was thinking maybe we could meet up. How's a free pass to bitch about your work sound? Abe-san? On the phone, in person, there's nothing I can tell you. <sighs> he hung up. And you too, buddy. This'll be fun. And which of your names should we be using for you now? Kawana? Or do you prefer Kitakata-sensei? Kitakata's a name that's been all but murdered by society. And Ijincho, I'm just a merry old handyman Kawana-san. If you ask the cops, you're the murder suspect Kitakata. After killing Sawa-sensei, you fled the scene. At least, that's the story the police top brass are passing down through the ranks. Now why would they say something like that about you? Calm down, Yagami. How come you never relax? So Kawana hired you guys from the start, and you pretended to not know each other in front of me? If that's the case, you really went all out for me. Didn't I tell you? The Liumang accepts anonymous requests, too. Tesso didn't know I was the one who hired him. I suppose there's no point in hiding that now. That's just how it is. Nothing to get mad over, bro. You really aren't hiding anything? Did you tell him all you've done? He's a former high school teacher who's going around killing bullies. Can't be much more to hide than that. Need any more convincing? <laughs> Honestly, I'm at a loss. I worked my ass off to get where you are. And I'm still trying to untangle the mess you've made of it. You've got my student helpers by the throats. So I'm really backed into a corner here. You mean the graduates from Kurokawa Academy? Like Mamiya-san? Very good, Sugiira-kun. So how about it? No reason for us to doubt each other's intentions, right? All the secrets are out in the open now. Fine. Then I'm gonna light up. You were just over at Komijuo, weren't you? RK was looking for me there. The police even lent them a hand. Yeah. Well, now I'm even more confused. I give up. Who in the world could be after me? Who has influence over both RK and the police? Care to venture a guess? They'd be the uneducated guesses of a handyman. You got any bright ideas yourself, Master Detective? I haven't confirmed it for sure yet, but I have a pretty good theory for you. Oh? Who? The Public Security Division. That's what a detective from Kanagawa PD said. According to them, you're the prime suspect in Sawa-sensei's murder. That's why Kanagawa PD was told to lay off R.K. Any trace of R.K. in the footage near Sawa-sensei's place is gone. Likely public security's work. And with that kind of backing, it's understandable why R.K. is so confident. Yo, hold up again. Why is public security after Kuwana in the first place?
Public Security is probably working for Reiko Kusumoto, Vice Minister of the Ministry of Health. What? Kawana, you had your students kidnap Shinya Kawai, right? Five years ago in Kamurocho? Kawai bullied Reiko Kusumoto's son, Mitsuruku. That painted a target on his back for you. But before you took Kawai out, you approached Reiko Kusumoto with your revenge offer, didn't you? Ahara told us that. Before taking revenge on a bully, you'd approach the family about it first. Did you make the same offer to Reiko Kusumoto? What if I did? She's the vice minister of the Ministry of Health. She's pretty popular. She's even cleaning up her predecessor's mess. If it were to surface that she agreed to a revenge killing, they'd have yet another massive scandal on their hands. And if you get to go down in cuffs instead of a body bag, that detail may just come out. Before that can happen, Reiko Kusumoto plans to have me silenced and use public security to do it. Exactly. Except public security can't just go after you, so they subcontracted RK to do the dirty work. That would explain why public security is trying to cover for RK. I see. Well, the logic starts off soundly enough. Something wrong with it? Unfortunately, yes. Something does stick out. And what's that? I did, in fact, approach Kusumoto-san five years ago, about taking revenge on Shinya Kawai. And just as you said, I used Mama Yakun and the others to kidnap Kawai. And? From that point on, Kusumoto-san knew I was directing Mama Yakun and the others. She'd seen their faces, knew their identities, everything. So, if Kusumoto-san wanted to go after me, Mama Yakun and the others would be first on the list. But the fact is, public security hasn't laid a finger on them even now. Which means, Kusumoto-san isn't the one giving them orders. Sure, that makes some sense. Hey, so sorry if this is off topic, but what was Kusumoto-san doing when Shinya Kawai was killed five years back? She was standing right there with me. Afterwards, she took three days of PTO, and that was a first for her. Why? Shinya Kawai died at the hands of Kusumoto-san. She drove the knife into his chest personally. She took it slow, making sure he suffered the whole time. Just like Akihiro Ehara, she avenged her son with her own two hands. I admire her. She killed Kawai herself? Afterward, she told me she'd never wash the smell of his blood off her hands. Damn, man. I was the only one who knew that, by the way. The others have no idea. On that day, five years ago, I sent them straight home after they brought me Kawai. And I was the only one with Kusumoto-san when she killed him. This sounds way too crazy to be real. Even so, the fact is Kusumoto-san hasn't betrayed me. Besides, I doubt the Vice Minister is powerful enough to order public security around. Then who is giving them their orders? Well, I'd say your theory's on the right track. I'm sure public security contracted RK. It lines up with what's happened so far. I imagine they're so persistent, because they know I can be used against Kusumoto-san. Either way, whoever's pulling the strings is someone who'll benefit from your capture. So if it isn't Reiko Kusumoto, maybe it's one of her enemies? An enemy? Yeah, like someone within the Ministry of Health, or maybe even some kind of political rival. Nothing would be more valuable to them than dirt on Kusumoto, right? They're probably trying to take her down. Or they could threaten and manipulate her as they see fit. Is that why public security has been taking action? If they wanted to take her down, they could have had the police investigate her fair and square. Right. Kusumoto-san can walk away from the Ministry of Health any time she wants. Plus, she has the public's support, especially with the younger crowds. All just more reasons for her to have enemies. I read some article about how even the Prime Minister has a hard time with her. <laughs> like. 
She'll get up in his face every time he signs an order. Dumbass loses so many arguments, he practically works for her now. So the Prime Minister is trying to find some dirt on Reiko Kusumoto? He's just an example. Weren't you listening when we said Kusumoto-san has lots of enemies in her position? Hey, don't be a dick. So whoever's behind this may have been looking for a weakness in Kusumoto-san for a while. They must have got their start after realizing Ehara's case was really about getting revenge on a bully. That puts Ehara and Reiko Kusumoto in the same boat, being that their only sons were bullying victims. And if they discovered that Kawai also vanished five years ago, Regardless, that wouldn't account for the rest of the incidents where a bully ended up dead. You'd know. You're the one going up and down the whole country killing them off, aren't you? Kawhi makes number seven. Seven? Damn, man. It wouldn't take much to connect the dots. It leads straight to her. Reiko Kusumoto. Then they'd know that she was among the victims who got her revenge. Yeah. And then... To Ahara's case. The link between him and Kusumoto is clear as day now, if you know what you're looking for. That link... is Sawa-sensei. It took me a while, but I connected the two cases together myself. It was R.K. She never should have even been on their radar. In fact, they traced your name from her. Sawa-sensei knew. She suspected you were involved with the Mikoshiba murder in one way or another, right? You don't care. You see your killing spree on these former bullies like you're doing the country a service. In your eyes, this is vengeance. Actually, no. You'd call it justice, wouldn't you? Except... Sawa-sensei wouldn't have died if it was. That was never my intent. She shouldn't have died. No. You don't get to just brush her off like that. Like an afterthought. You had to have known you'd go down with this eventually. And you're fine if all your old students like you and Mamiya go down with you. By then, why would you look back at your trail of blood? Why would you clean up all your carnage? It's not your problem, right? You move forward with one purpose. Send as many bullies to hell as you can. Beyond that, you don't give a shit what happens. Sawa Sensei died in tears. He didn't see what I saw. The fear she must have felt was still frozen on her face. You, Ahara, Reiko Kusamoto, you're all murderers. And so far, all of you have gotten away with it. So why did Yoko Sawa end up having to pay the price? Tell me, will you even be able to look her in the eye when you die? I doubt it. That's gonna follow me well into the afterlife. So what now then? March to the cops and turn myself in? You should. If you don't do exactly that, no one will know why she had to die. And that'll be the end of her story. Everyone will keep on dancing around her death. Even though she was completely innocent. Just like the cops are doing. Afraid I can't do that. If I turn myself in now, there's only one thing that happens. Public security takes me out. And worse, Reiko Kusumoto would be compromised. And that, I will never allow to happen. Of all the people involved in this, she deserves to walk free. Her revenge was justified. You think so? All she did was scrape off the scum of the earth that pushed her only son into an attempted suicide. She didn't sit around crying about a legal miscarriage. She took justice into her own hands. No one has any right to indict her for that. So don't go there. Nobody lays a finger on her! Hey, skinny ginger kid. Looks like this is gonna turn into a little more than a chat. Good thinking. So is your plan to kill me too? Anyone who interferes with your justice? We all get added to your body count, don't we? The punishment fits the crime. You're just blind. If you can't see that, then you can go to hell! 
Stay out of my way! How long has this been going now? I lost track. Call it? Nah. They're gonna tire out eventually. Beating the shit out of each other is the way some people communicate. I can see that. There we go. Now it's done. Yeah, it's about that time. Haven't you had enough yet? What? You think it's time to give it a rest? Hell no. Stay out of our way. You're not looking so hot. You got lucky I stopped when I did, you know. I had a move lined up with your name on it. You're the one who got lucky as far as I'm concerned. I was about to kick your ass. <sighs> what a fucking mess, guys. Hey, both of you, eat. Your food's getting cold. One of our higher-ups cooked this himself. It won't look good if there's any left. <sighs> Not a problem. This stuff's great. Mmm, mm, delicious. Man, this is the good stuff. So that means Reiko Kusamoto could be being targeted by public security. Right. It's possible part of the police wants to catch me as leverage against Kusumoto-san on public security orders. But that's only if public security really is behind this. You're the one who said you got that info from a cop. Well, someone up top's been putting pressure on the investigation. That much is clear. But no matter how you slice it, the fact that you're enemy number one while RK roams free is absurd. Unfortunately, all I got out of that cop was that public security itself is who we're up against. Public security is Japan's top intelligence agency. If they're after you, there's no escape. Agreed. Then I guess now's a good time to make a suggestion. Huh? Hmm? Tell me, who benefits the most from you two fighting? Huh? That'd be public security. The more you drag each other down, the easier they'll be able to get the jump on you. By the time you notice, it's too late. They've got you. That's exactly what they'd want, right? But what if you two work together? You watch each other's backs and act before RK and public security do. You might even be able to find out who's pulling the strings. Huh. Yeah. For two enemies to join forces, there needs to be an even greater threat to fight. Sure. I'm on board with that. Fine, but this is only temporary. Once we've finished with public security, I'm gonna make sure you answer for what you've done. Okay, uh, then where do we start? Should we just storm public security at this point? No. First we need to confirm public security is really the enemy we're after. Right. We'll make our move after that. We have the element of surprise. They have no idea we're working together. Then we'll use it to our advantage and outsmart them. <laughs> Aw, look at the boys playing nice. If public security's trying to find some leverage against Kusumoto-san, they'll likely be listening in on her. They're the experts in wiretapping and espionage, after all. We just need a quick confirmation. How? <laughs> we'll just give her a call. Right here? Yes. That way, her enemy will trace the call and pinpoint our location. 
and public security is the only one in Japan who can pull that off, so we'll know right away if it's them. <laughs> Good thinking. <laughs> yeah. Wait, hold up! You saying if you call up Reiko Kusumoto, then the bad guys will start pouring in? Can we maybe not do that here? Actually, that might just work in our favor. Huh? Bro, why are you talking crazy? Uh, Yagami-san, you sure about getting on bro terms without Kaito-san? Wouldn't that bum him out? Whoa. This is amazing. What is this? Good shit, huh? You got your taste, bro! I knew you of all people would notice the difference. Kuana, when was the last time you spoke to Reiko Kusumoto? Five years ago, on the night she killed Kawai. We arranged it, so we'd never contact each other after that. So you have her number then? If it hasn't changed. What is it then? I have an idea. What? We're gonna set a trap to find out if we really are up against public security. If they trace the call and they send people for us, then we know for sure it's them. That's why we're gonna call Reiko Kusumoto using a location that doesn't exist at all. How's that work? We'll use two phones that can't be traced back to us, and we'll relay your voice. Obviously, you won't be wherever we do this from. Best to do this someplace with no one around. Once we see who they send in, mission accomplished. Wait, what's happening? <laughs> Don't worry, I got it. You'll catch up, Sugiyura-kun. First, we need to know our enemy. I'll have Tsukumo prep us some burner phones. Which means... a truce for the time being? Only while you're here. Gotta keep things civil for my brother. <laughs> Man, Zhao sans cooking makes even the suckiest situations not suck. Cheers to that! It's Kuana. You ready? I'm about to call Reiko Kusumoto. Once you're connected, you take it from there. It's been five years since I last spoke to her. Yeah. Can't imagine this won't be awkward. I know. Okay, do it. Yes, hello? This is Kitakata, from Kurokawa Academy. What? You'll have to forgive me for this, but the position I'm in required me to reach out to you. I would never have done this otherwise. I should also note, there's a high probability this phone call is being tapped. I see. Very well, then. It's been 13 years, Kusumoto-san. So it has. Kitakata-sensei. I've read about your accomplishments, to think you'd become a vice minister. You never really know how things are going to work out. Ah, uh, but that's not true at all, Kusumoto-san. You were always destined to move up in the world. I've got to be honest with you. A woman as virtuous and as capable as you deserves the world and then some. But... How is Mitsuru-kun? I'm afraid he's still asleep. Nothing's changed. I see. I wish I had the words. What is it you wanted? If you've been watching the news, you've probably already heard. I've become a prime suspect for a crime. They think I murdered Yokosawa in her apartment. I've heard. Obviously, it wasn't me who killed her, of course. Do you happen to remember Sawa-kun by any chance? The girl from your class. She was the only one of those students who ever came to visit Mitsuru. But even then, that's been at least ten years now. I got a letter from her once. She wanted to tell me she'd become a teacher. But... I never did reply, and that was the last I'd heard from her. I see. So back to my question. What do you want? I hope you weren't planning to ask me for a favor. I'm afraid the answer would be no. No, it's not that. It's just... I wanted to let you know that at some point, someone may come to you to ask a few questions about me. I thought I should give you a heads up. I'll make every effort to ensure they won't cause any trouble for you, Kusumoto-san. I'm sorry about this. I'll try to handle it from my side. So in your opinion, then, do you believe anything related to you could cause me any trouble? Don't worry. I'm sure you'll be just fine. 
I will say it's been great to hear your voice again. But this should be the last time you ever hear from me. I'll try my best. A shadow looms over Yagami and Kuwana. Japan's National Intelligence Agency Public Security fixes its gaze on Reiko Kuzumoto of the Ministry of Health. Five years ago, Kuwana prompted her to take revenge on Shinya Kawai. You know, this kind of shit is why you get on my nerves. Couldn't we have done this by phone? I just came from seeing Reiko Kusumoto. I told her to turn herself in for murdering Kawai five years ago. You what? What did she have to say about that? That she had no sins to atone for. Of course not. Look, what do you think you're doing? Her part in this is done. Don't drag her back into it. This isn't yours to finish. You would just let Sawa-sensei stay collateral damage. How do you think her folks feel? They probably think you killed their daughter. And they don't know why, or if justice will be served. Do they have to suffer like that? All without even knowing the truth? <sighs> would Sawa-sensei want that? You talk about justice, but she keeps getting left out. You aren't even trying when it comes to her. Say whatever you want, but if you cause Kusumoto-san any more pain, I will never forgive you. That's exactly why I didn't tell you I was going to meet her. Listen, Yagami. She hides it well, but she's never gotten over the fact Mitsuru tried to jump to his death. And she's not sure how to feel about killing Kawai. Unlike me. If she was anything like you, I would have pushed her harder to confess. There's no evidence that she killed Kawai. He simply vanished from Kamurocho, and the police didn't even know about it. Besides, there's no case without a corpse. Point being, she'll never be charged. Even if she did turn herself in, the police wouldn't know what to do with her. Don't think for a second that you're getting a pass here. You've killed, what, seven people now? Do you even hesitate anymore? You got proof? Running around making baseless accusations. You sure you were a real fucking lawyer? My colleagues in Kamrocha are getting ready to appeal Ahara's case. Your actions are going to be put under a microscope. I wouldn't even call that bad news. I want the world to know their bullies are getting what they're due. And by then, I'll probably be going by a different name, maybe even a different look. You're just gonna keep doing this? Did Sawa-sensei sacrifice mean nothing to you? Is that the only thing keeping you around? Truth be told, I don't think exposing everything is even in Sawa's best interest. What? Sawa-kun herself felt guilty. I just sent you the proof. What is this? An audio file? After Ahara-san lost in court, she called me. I recorded our conversation. Sawakun's testimony in court was false, and she was racked with guilt over it. And your first thought was to record it? When she was at her most vulnerable? Yes. And then I played it for Ahara-san. He had the right to know the real reason his son killed himself. All you did was light the fires of vengeance in Ahara's heart because you didn't want to be alone. You know, I've heard that bullying is almost instinctive. That's why people who do it never stop. I mean, think about it. Would you stop cleaning a toilet just because it'll get filthy again? Somebody's always got to get his hands dirty. And that somebody's gonna be you? If it means I can prevent another Mitsuru Kusumoto, yes, I will keep killing. These bastards who prey on the defenseless must be punished for all to see. I wish the law would do its job. Because deep down, I don't want to do any of this. I understand what you're saying. But you're taking it too far. Just stop, Kawana. If you really want to stop me, you're gonna have to kill me. And call it justice. 
Hello? Yo. I heard you're back in town, Yagami. Kiwana? That you? <laughs> I'll send someone to bring you to me. So you really are still in Ichin Show? Yeah. But we don't want RK or public security joining us. Make sure you're not being followed first. Shake any tales you might have. How? <laughs> you should know that one by now, Mr. Detective. Get to Salvakun's apartment once you know you're good. Her apartment? Yeah. Later. Yo! Sorry to make you come all the way out here. Being a wanted man sucks. Pretty sweet digs for a wanted man. Hey, this place has all the escape routes I could ever need. No one around to get caught in the crossfire, either. Funny time to start caring about how your actions affect others. Akaike, mind giving me and Yagami-san some space? Go ahead, Yagami-san. I feel awful for dragging Tesso into this. RK only trashed his place because I was there. Those damn thugs really don't give a rat's ass about the Liumon. It's public security who doesn't give a rat's ass. There's nowhere in Japan you can escape them. By the way, there's a good chance Soma's an undercover public security agent, ever since his Tojo clan days. He's public security? Yeah. If we can drag him out of whatever hole he's in, we might find out who's at the very top of this. And until the truth is exposed, he'll be hunted forever. Well, that's concerning. Sawa Sensei's murder, Mikoshiba's murder, everything has to come to light. And in a way that public security can't sweep it under the rug, I think Ahara's appeal hearing is going to be the perfect time to expose it all. When you say expose it all, you mean Kusumoto-san too, right? I won't lift a finger to betray her. This conversation is pointless. Even if that's what killed Sawa-sensei? Because there is a point. Your judgment's just too clouded to see it. Do you really know what Mitsuru was like 13 years ago? Then you have no right to speak to me that way. I'm facing the reality of bullying head-on. The rest of the world is content to turn a blind eye to the problem. Our whole society. They make a show of it when a kid commits suicide. But nothing changes about the reasons why. And every time, some bully with tears in his eyes always has the exact same line. I had no idea they would ever kill themselves. Yeah. They have no idea how their cruelty affects the person on the receiving end. You know why? Because they've never suffered. They don't know what it means to feel unsafe. I take care of that. I show them how much they've taken their safety for granted. Their actions need to have consequences. Even if they don't realize until it's too late. Koana. As we speak, there are kids out there fearing that they have to go to school tomorrow. Like Mitsuru. Every kid like him deserves justice. So I had to become what I am to see it done. I know exactly what you're saying, all too well. In fact, I know so well that it scares me. But if you let your sense of justice guide you totally unchecked, you'll eventually lose control and end up in a pretty dark place. You'll rationalize the sacrifices, whatever justice takes. For example, Sawa Sensei's death at the hands of Soma. Enough! Real justice has nothing to fear from the truth. Otherwise, you wouldn't turn away. So come on. Until you and Reiko Kusamoto turn yourselves in, public security won't give up. Don't you get it? If you end up caught by them now, you're gonna disappear for good. Yeah. It would be a good time to disappear. What? I'll do it on my own terms, though. Public security won't find me. 
I knew the day would come that I'd have to trigger my exit strategy. It pays to have underground connections. Oh, you think you'll be that easy, do you? I'm sure you know. A serial killer can't hide. Right. Every person that I've murdered deserved what they had coming. I won't stop doing it. There's dirty work to be done. And I don't mind being society's handyman. Whatever it takes. Thirteen years ago when Mitsuru jumped off that roof, I knew I'd spend the rest of my life atoning. It's the only way I can think of that will give Mitsuru what I didn't give him then. I don't really care what becomes of me either. I owe him. And I'm going to finish what I started. Okay. So why'd you bring me out here then? You seem pretty set. Were you hoping I was gonna pat you on the back for it? Hardly. I wouldn't expect a guy who drew his line in the sand to suddenly come around. But... Maybe that's exactly why I spilled my guts to you in the first place. What do you mean? Ehara-san should be the one carrying this thing. I hate to ask, but would you mind passing it along? You're the only one I can trust with it now. Isn't this... Toshiro? That locket has my final message to Ehara-san in it. I was supposed to help him get justice for his son, but I'm not going to be able to see it through. Well, I guess the rest is up to him. As soon as I'm out of here, my face and my name are going to have to be changed. Were you thinking I was just going to watch as you walked away? <laughs> you really going to make this a dramatic breakup? Stop it. I'm not going to back down on this. Years ago, a girl died because I didn't chase the truth to the end. Her name was Emi Terasawa, and I'll never forget her. Murderers tend to follow a rule. They have no problem killing again to protect their secrets. That's you, Reiko Kusamoto. It's still gonna apply. Called it, I suppose. I half knew that you would pull this shit instead of saying goodbye. If you run, I won't chase you. There may be a trail of death in your wake, but in court, I'd have nothing that would stick. Even if I brought you down, the only thing that'd keep you from escaping are the bars of a jail cell. So what now, then? Until you finally realize that you need to turn yourself in. I'll need to be persuasive. For you, Reiko Kusamoto, I firmly believe that the two of you can still be saved. <laughs> I swear. I made sure I wasn't tailed on the way here. We both did. Neither of us could have led them out here. I know for damn sure we're too careful for that to happen. That means there's only one guy they could have tailed to find us. It was a Kaike. Public security figured out that there's a connection between me and him. Are you aware of the implications of that? Is figuring that out right now really all that important? It's Kusumoto-san. She knows him. She's the only connection between me and Akaike. What? I'm saying, Kusumoto-san decided to sell me out. Something happened that caused her to change her mind. Public security, I guess. Remember earlier? Didn't you say something about this ship having a bunch of escape routes? A bunch of escape routes great for a party of one. Fine. Why are you still here? Well, I thought you wanted to persuade me. I admit, I was interested in hearing you spin some more of your bullshit. <laughs> you got it. Now I'll have time to think. What is the holdup? Hurry up and take them. Yo! These guys have a whole bag of tricks up their sleeves. Take out their legs so they can't run. Looks like they finally upgraded us to the arcade big shots. Yeah. But they're gonna be sorry they messed with us all the same.
about time for plan B, huh? You saying you've got another trick up your sleeve? Yeah, but it kind of sucks, so I wouldn't get your hopes up. Hey, pull up! You're not going anywhere. Got to get off me! Stop! There's nowhere to run! a temporary alliance with the fugitive Kuana. Kusumoto-san, is Yagami there? Put me on speaker, please. Go ahead. So, it seems Ahara-san's trial was a big success. He took our failing legal system and turned it on its head. Couldn't have done it without you. I don't know what you're thinking, but public security has to be tracing this call. You have a plan? No, not this time. That's why I'm using my own phone. And that's just the way I want it. Can't run forever, you know. What the hell are you saying? They catch you, you're a dead man. That's exactly why I'm negotiating to prevent that. Kusumoto-san. Yes. I'll be up front with you. I never imagined the day would come that you would be the one to betray me. But if I had to guess, Mitsuru-kun must have woke up. If that's the case, then Kawaii's murder, your whole past, you're not the only one it stands to ruin. If all that comes into the light, Mitsuru-kun will be labeled the son of a murderer. Exactly. I can't let that... That's the one thing I need to prevent. I know. That's good. That's exactly what you should be doing. So please, don't stop now on my behalf. Enough is enough. You and your son have been through enough hell. I want to protect Mitsuru-kun too. Almost as much as his mother. Where is Kawai's body? Tell me. I can only assume this call is being traced, so even as we speak, I'm standing somewhere very close to it. He gave us the location. I'm going to dispatch Soma. Kawana! Where are you? I'm an Injincho. If I take even one step out of this city, I'd be powerless. I've got nowhere else left to go. It's Kawana. I assume you're here? Then all the players have assembled. I mean you're here too? Where are you? What is all this? Put simply, a trap for Soma, using Kawai's body as bait. You must have known he'd show up too. So everything from calling Reiko Kusumoto to this, it was all to corner Soma? Yeah. I'm gonna drag him kicking and screaming into the light. He only gets away with his shit because he does it in the shadows, and his friends at public security just watch. If I expose them, Kusumoto-san can lead a happy life. You know she sold you out, right? Look, that doesn't matter. This is the only shot we have at Soma. Alone, I could probably kill him. But there's no way I can take him in alive. If you wanted help, you could have just asked. To deceive your enemies, start with your allies. And besides, if you didn't come, I had a plan B. Listen, I'm in the deepest part of the warehouse. Far down as you can go. So much closing in. You made it out alive, Yagami. So, is all this playing out exactly as you planned? If we can catch this murderer here and put him in chains, then I'd say we're off to a good start. <laughs> That's hypocritical, isn't it? You say I'm a killer? What's your body count up to? I'm just a former Japanese teacher. Sounds to me like you've got it all wrong. Well, doesn't that figure? The only teacher I ever hated was in my high school Japanese class. Soma, you deserve what's coming. I'm afraid that's what you say when you have the upper hand. Go, talk!
Yagami! Bondo 2, he'll abandon you to your fate. To hell with evil being necessary for order. You're rotting the cell for the rest of your miserable life. All that's left to do is clean this shit up. Yo, you might want to stay away from that. Pull it out any further, and it'll set off the bomb I planted. What? It could very well end up going off anyway. But that'll be up to me. Oh, what the fuck? I can't keep track of how many times this guy has changed sides. As long as Kawai's body exists, Kusumoto-san will never be free. So I'll make sure it's never found again. You guys might want to consider stepping out. Kawana, you can't do it. But I can. This was always going to be the backup plan anyway. If you guys hadn't made it down here, I would have blown up both the body and Soma all in one shot. But still... If Soma dies, I'll never get to the one pulling the strings. And Kusumoto-san will never be free of these goddamn shackles. Kusumoto-san needs to turn herself in. If she keeps trying to hide from all this, she'll be haunted by her past wherever she goes. You'd rather she carry those sins for the rest of her life, than all by herself. Because after today, you won't be there to help anymore. You have to leave. You'll disappear. From here on out, you'll need to live deep in the shadows. If she turns herself in, she'd never be able to see Mitsuru again. Her son is finally awake, after 13 years in a coma. Does tearing them apart sound like justice to you? I want nothing more than for everyone involved to get a happy ending. But still, if I turn my back on it now, Sawa-sensei's sacrifice becomes a footnote. That won't work. She can't say her piece without a voice. So if I don't raise mine for her, what justice prevails? Fine. I'll just push the button. Everyone in here can be blown to hell. You really gonna do that? If you guys don't back off, then I will. Do you know how many people I've killed through the years? No. But if you were really that kind of scum, we wouldn't have come down here. You wouldn't be the kind of person worth saving. <laughs> this one is my fight, guys. The way I see this, talk, you and Kuana both have your reasons. Something to consider. But between the both of you, is there really a right answer?
the truth was being hidden. That's what led to Sawa-sensei's death, isn't it? Set Kusamoto free. It's time for all this to end. I mean, you've got to already know. When justice breaks, someone's always gonna find a way to redefine it to suit themselves. And from that point of view, everything you do feels justified. That's why... That's why you're able to look past the sacrifice. And the damage you cause. No. I didn't want this. I get that. But who decides what's wrong? Who gets to decide what's right? That's not us. Come on. Sawa-sensei died because you made the choice for her. And you took her truth. Who does that really serve? Tell me who. Why would you want that? The truth is all we have. When the law can't be fair, the truth becomes our last ray of hope. So please, Sawa Sensei's truth, don't take that from her. <laughs> <laughs> Kusumoto san Kitakata sensei You. I couldn't even protect your secret. <laughs> Please lift up your eyes. <laughs> I saw that picture you posted of Kawhi's dead face. I took a hard look. This was the man I killed. I saw the pain in his propulsive face. I saw the consequences of my actions. Sawasa never should have been dragged into this. I saw how I betrayed and abandoned you too. Kusumoto-san. I've been frightened ever since. I was scared Mitsuru would find out the truth. I was worried he would discover his mother was a monster. And for you as well, Sensei. You carried it for me. You clung to such a dark secret. I made you do this for so long. I never should have gone through with it. And I won't let you bear the burden of my mistake anymore. That's why I've decided. I'm going to turn myself in. <laughs> I'll leave Kawaii's body with you. The cops can have him. But then I'm out. I gotta disappear for a while. I'll fade back into the shadows. Like hell, man. If he's arrested, Public security would have his head. They'd charge him with the one murder he didn't commit. Sawa Sensei wouldn't get the justice she deserves. And worse, they'd find a way to silence him. Besides, you don't have any proof that I'm even guilty. Anything they could charge me for would never stick. Just what are you getting at? You said yourself that you spent the last several years taking out bullies all over the country. 
That's got to count for something. I never left a single shred of evidence behind. So good luck. The cops and the prosecution would have nothing to go on. In a legal sense, all you guys can really do is stand there and watch me walk out of here. <laughs> the law has never been very good about being flexible. The whole system is hollow. It can't judge who needs to be judged. It can't save who needs to be saved. I'll expose that. Every action I take serves that goal. As long as kids like Mitsuru continue to suffer out there, I'll do it for them. Even if it means I have to keep my hands dirty, I don't care. Goodbye. You're right about one thing. The law is hollow. As it stands now, the system does fail people. All the same, the law evolves. We have to make it better. But it takes time, and the work is never done. That's why. That's why as long as the law lets people fall through the cracks, I'm gonna be there. Except, I won't do it anything like you. Across the country, all five victims have evidently been deceased for several years. According to the anonymous tip, the common thread between these victims is that they were all at one time accused of malicious school bullying. The police are working quickly to identify them and an investigation task force is being launched immediately. This task force's first challenge will be to secure the cooperation of law enforcement across all of the prefectures involved.